what's up my people welcome back to another video subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber click the top bell icon after you subscribe to get notified when anything new is on the channel and also click the thumbs up if you don't see the option for give me a thumbs up click on the x it depends on your right hand side and you're gonna see the option for give me a thumbs up so i'm gonna just get into the first thing i'm gonna share with you guys right american mom stab to death son in custody the St. Andrew Salt Criminal Investigation Brand CIB is probing yesterday stabbing death of a female United States U.S. citizen allegedly at the hands of her own son. The deceased woman has since been identified as 54-year-old Marvel Johnson. Reports are that about 7.20 a.m. residents on Wavell Avenue in Kingston 11 heard a loud commotion and screams for help the police were summoned to the location where they saw johnson in a pool of b l o o d she was taken by the lawman to the kingston public hospital kph where she was pronounced our news team understand that the domestic dispute occurred at the home of a now deceased member of the popular british crew the prime suspect who according to investigators is the child's is the child of the victim is in custody of the police he was picked up at the crime scene our news team understand that the accused was not cooperating with the police they believe the man who some residents say is of unsound mind was deported to jamaica when the police moved her she not look like she was alive but doctors had to pronounce her the youth is her son and him a deportee a resident told our news team the police said the man in custody refused to answer initially when asked about his relation to the woman the corporate communication unit of the jamaica constabulary force confirmed report of the incident the ccu said johnson was stab multiple times allegedly by her son johnson is the second american woman to be m-u-r-d-e-r-e-d -E -E in jamaica in the past month on september 23 shernet aman was k-i-l-l -L while traveling in a taxi from a funeral at medares it's reported that a g-u-n man opened fire at the vehicle in the red pan area targeting a man who suffered multiple g-u-n-s-h-o-t wounds to her head and upper body last week detectives charged carrot rutherford who they say is a hitman with her m-u-r-d-e-r -E he also under investigation for other m-u-r-d-e-r-s including that of a chinese national prime minister andrew Olness last week during a jamaica labor party meeting in north central clarendon said plans were underway for a policy shift to counter domestic and intimate partner violence which he suggests is playing a rapidly increasing role in fueling major crimes. Only said his government was also concerned about the frequency with which these MURDERS are being committed, noting that the leading profile of MURDERS in the country is changing from gang related to domestic violence related only said the government would begin reviewing legislation to make aspect of reporting on domestic violence mandatory the saint andrew south police division where the latest homicide involving an american occurred has recorded a 14 percent reduction in m-u-r-d-e-r-s year on year up to september 30 the division which led jamaica in murders for two consecutive years 2020 and 2021 recorded 95 m-u-r-d-e-r-s 16 fewer than the corresponding year for the period under review up to september 30 a total of 1038 m-u-r-d-e-r-s were committed nationally that are holy people that are enough so may i say so guys subscribe to the channel and like the video if you can't see the option for like the video click on the x it over on your right hand side and like the video and you know what i mean you can click back live chat and go back to the screen that you was on right so we are gonna move on people st catherine businessman hospitalized following gun attack 
A St. Catherine businessman remains hospitalized after he was SHOT and injured by unknown assailants along the Spanish Town bypass early this morning. It is reported that about 12.40 a.m. the man was being accompanied by employees to dispose of garbage when they were pounced upon by two masked men on a motorcycle. The men brandished GUNS but the group ran and boarded their vehicle. The attackers fired several SHOTS during which the businessman sustained GUN SHOT injuries to his back. He drove himself to the hospital where he was admitted. An investigation has been launched by the Spanish Town Police. Jaja. So it looks like so this maybe is a setup. Are them people here yeah, watch him and know him routine and decide to attack him on him go dash through the garbage? You know what I mean? So, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section. So, we are gonna move on and you know, people shopkeeper and watchman SHOT and them drop out. See, why people this are the second or uh, uh, what the second double knockings since. Day before yesterday or since the start of the week? Yeah, I think so. Since the start of the week, right? And this, I mean, I listed. Two men were SHOT and them drop out by GUN men in Orangefield District in Linstead, St. Catherine on Monday night. The men have been identified as 33-year-old Dayton Dyer, otherwise called Corey, a watchman at the Orange Orangefield Primary School and Rasil Ruga Givens a shopkeeper it was reported that around 7 45 pm resident heard loud explosion and upon checking saw the bodies of the now deceased they summoned the police who found the men covered in blood with what appeared to be gun shot wounds to their heads and upper bodies dwyer was seen lying on his back along the side of the road clad in a navy blue t-shirt gray short pants blue underpants and a pair of gray and black slippers givens was seen on his back inside his shop behind the counter clad in a white t-shirt with multicolored floral designs black black jeans pants and black socks police said 28 spent casing were found while processing the scene no motive has been established for the attack the police said so me have them picture people me i go show you the two of them picture so i them picture this me people yeah you know what i mean so me don't know what go on they say if a reprisal or what but you know what i mean be careful people you know what i mean that's all me have to say so we are going to move on my people to the beach store i look update on the beach store case so me telling us people you will go in a court with your right and dash it away. You know what I mean? And I also say me not believe everything the brother with ton witness say. You know what I mean? But him admits a boy him illiterate. And some of the statement them, the police them maybe add certain things to it. And because him can't read, him just sign it. So me I go just play that little record in here and make no ear walk one and then give you another update. You see me because right now the whole case of it all because of something where them never disclose. See? During cross examination, Beachy Stout's attorney Christopher Townsend questioned Denvalin Bobla Minot about the many opportunities he had to tell Mrs. Tonia Hamilton MacDonald of the plan to kill her. Bobla responded saying he didn't tell her, but he wanted to. He testified that he took Tonia to his house once where he tried to tell her, but according to him, it never worked. Bobla had previously told the court that he was sleeping with Tonia. Mr. Townsend questioned, So you had no problem making love to her, but you didn't tell her that she was going to be killed? Bobla answered, It was hard for me to tell her. Townsend again went in, But it was not hard for you to make love to her? Bobla replied in a playful tone, No, which evoked suppressed laughter in the courtroom. He told the court that despite talking to Tony on the phone daily, he didn't have her number saved in his phone. Mr. Townsend asked, So what would you talk about with her? Bobla responded, 
talk about where we would have gone and ends out. Go somewhere and spend the day in the park during our lunchtime at Kenroy Pier. We sit down in the car and just talk. Meanwhile, Mr. Townsend accused Bobla of lying in statements he gave to the police prior to the trial. Mr. Townsend suggested that nowhere in his statements did he ever mention any conversation he had with Beachy Stout about killing his wife. In giving evidence, Bobla told the court that Beachy Stout offered him the job to kill his wife. He maintained that he wasn't lying. You can't tell me what Mr. Max said to me. You never did it. You had to take up for somebody who were wrong. Townsend asked, Are you making up the story as you go along? Bobla responded, Now make up no story, sir. Bobla previously testified how he subcontracted the killing of Tonia to a man named Oscar Barnes. Barnes is also on trial. He said he and Barnes went to Tonia's house on four occasions to kill her. During examination, he told the prosecutor that these attempts were made in February of 2020. But he later testified that the attempts to kill Tonia happened in June that year. Townsend asked which of the dates were a lie. Bobla answered, Might be the one where you say about February. Mr. Townsend suggested that he lied during examination. When you were telling the lie, did you know it was a lie? To this, Bobla said, It wasn't telling a lie. It was just a mistake. I can't remember the dates. Mr. Townsend tried to take another... Stressed Bobla shook his head and said, Father God, me tired, me sick. We can't manage this no more. Tilting his head to look at the ceiling of the courtroom, he said, Just touch somebody to the answer at time. Following those remarks, presiding Judge Chester Stamp allowed Bobla a few minutes to compose himself. The trial will resume on Tuesday morning at 10. So people, that was a clip from Nationwide News. You saw me I say, so, I'm going to go now and update what going on today, right? Beachy Stout M-U-R-D-E-R trial halted over statement disclosure. So, I'll be things that go on in this case, my people. The M-U-R-D-E-R trial of Portland businessman Everton Beachy Stout McDonald was brought to an abrupt halt on Tuesday after it was revealed that there were at least two written statements given by prosecution witness Denvalin Bobla Minot that were never seen by the defense. The statement dated June 12, 2020 and October 8, 2020 run for a total of 21 pages. The statement reportedly contained what the defense is describing as significant information that they could have used to their benefit. The presiding judge, Justice Chester Stamp, chided the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution, ODPP, for what he described as an extraordinary and shocking development. According to the judge, the revelation is the kind of thing that should result in sanctions. The lead prosecutor attempt to answer for the ODPP noting that the prosecution was not in the possession of the original case file and only received it this morning. To this, an irritated justice stamp shot back the office of the DPP as many officers it's something of a corporate entity this should not be happening the judge noted he could not see what sanctions would advance the interest of justice at this late stage in the trial in a sort of voce remark lead defense attorney christopher Townsend was heard muttering this is the kind of thing that should result in a mistrial the defense has asked for an adjournment to pursue the documents Attorneys are at this hour deliberating on the way forward after the presiding judge firmly declared the trial will continue. So people that are the update, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. And please subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. And click the top bell icon to get notified when there is anything new on the channel. And people... Click the like button for me, please, and thanks. Give me a thumbs up. If you don't see the option for give me a thumbs up, just click on the X. It will go the over by your right hand side. If you're there on a phone, click on the X and then you're going to get the option for like the video. You know what I mean? So we are going to move on, my people. Jamaican farm worker, D-I-E-S, 
in Canada. So a for America drop out. A Jamaican for America drop out in a Canada. A Jamaican for America is D E A D after he was found and responsive in his room by a co-worker in Ontario, Canada early this month. The Ministry of Labour and Social Security said on Tuesday he has been identified as Daniel Brown. The cause of death has yet to be revealed. Reports are that on October 7, Brown returned from home from work, prepared a meal and went to bed. The ministry in a release said that on the morning of October 8, Jamaican liaison service acting chief liaison officer Altia Riley was contacted that Brown was found unresponsive in his room by a co-worker. The paramedics were immediately called and upon their arrival, Brown was, was pronounced. According to the ministry, a senior member of its family service unit has visited Brown's next of kin on several occasions following his passing. The ministry has consistently kept the family updated on matters relating to Brown's passing and has shared any new information received by the coroner and other entities in Canada as soon as it's received. The release stated. So I'm going to put up in picture right here so people so i him this you know what i mean r.i.p to him and condolences to his family so guys please like up this video for me please and thanks if you don't see the option for like the video click on the x it will go up on your right hand side and then you will get the option for like the video and also subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber please and thanks so guys this is the end of the video so bless up on yourself and thanks for watching.